The Wellness Hour, an in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You are watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know about dental implants. Our first guest is an expert on the topic, board certified periodontist, Dr. Kuznia. Dr. Kuznia, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Good. Now, before we get into today's topic, and you don't look like a dentist, by the way. Do people ever tell you that? Sometimes. 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 Now, before we get into today's topic, your background, your training, your board certified periodontist, exactly what is that? A uh, board certified periodontist is a dentist that's gone through three years of additional training above and beyond dental school, surgical specialty training, and IV sedation training, and dental implant training to specifically help patients replace missing teeth and get healthy. Okay, so dental implants. What are the different categories of patients that you see? Well, the dental categories start with missing one tooth. Uh, two teeth, several teeth, three teeth. P patients can be missing teeth due to trauma, periodontal disease, tooth decay. So there are several patients that have been told that they're going to lose their teeth and they'll hold on to them for years and that's just not healthy. So their general dentist will say, your teeth have to go. Yeah, you, you need dentures. And they do nothing? Oh yeah. I mean, I've just saw someone recently that 12 to 15 years ago, he doesn't even know when, but he was told he needed dentures. And he's been walking around since then with all that disease in his mouth affecting his overall health. Well, when someone has periodontal disease and bad teeth and loose teeth and bad breath, it really affects how you feel about yourself. So yeah, you don't smile as much. Interesting, okay. You don't eat the foods that you want to eat. You don't want to show anybody your smile. Now, are the denture wearers the ones, in your opinion, that benefit the most with dental implants? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's life-changing. How so? I mean, you say, of course you're a dentist. You think teeth are pretty important. Well, I'll tell you what, Randy. Dentures are not a replacement for teeth. They're a replacement for no teeth. What do you mean by that? Well, the dentures are just plastic and they fit on the gums. They don't attach to anything. Like your teeth, they're attached to your jawbone right. and help you chew food. Dentures aren't attached to anything. Dental implants can attach them to your jaw make them more secure, and enable people to chew more food. Okay, so so the categories of dental implant patients, it, it, and we'll start with the one tooth. Why would you want to get a dental implant, uh, in your view? Why is it better than traditional dentistry? Well, Let's start there. For someone who's missing one tooth, if the options are to just replace that one tooth with a dental implant that you can brush around, floss around, versus getting a bridge where the adjacent teeth are cut down, that's always the better option. Once you've reduced a tooth, for instance, for a bridge, you've shortened the longevity of that tooth. Now you brought models about, uh, you know, for people that are missing one tooth. How is it better or different than uh, what traditional dentistry offers? Well, a dental implant is an individual tooth replacement, meaning it doesn't have any contact with the adjacent teeth like a traditional bridge does. So the patient can floss around the dental implant just like it's a tooth, it feels just like a tooth, has nothing to do with the adjacent teeth. The dental implant is made of titanium, so it, of course it doesn't get tooth decay. All right. And it's so a maybe longer, it's better than it's a longer, tooth. yeah, maybe it's better, but okay. it, it really is a longer lasting tooth replacement than conventional uh, bridge work. I mean, it can last as long as you live or as long okay. as you, it, it can last as like long as you live. Okay. It's got a crown on it with porcelain. So of course, porcelain can fracture just like a crown on any other tooth, but it won't ever get tooth decay because it's not a tooth. So these, these uh, models you have, what are we looking at here? Well, this is an example of replacement of two teeth, and maybe the adjacent two teeth had short roots. So this is where the preparations had to be extended two teeth past the, the missing tooth space. Now, when you say preparations, they have to carve down the teeth. When you get a bridge, the teeth okay. are cut down to cement a bridge onto the teeth. And you can see that for someone that maybe was only missing two front teeth, it affected the front six teeth. Where instead, this person could have gotten two dental implants right across the front and left their 
adjacent teeth in a natural condition. Randy, let me tell you what's going on with a lot of these people. They're wearing these partial dentures what called is this, flippers. By the way? This is called a flipper. So this is actually what they look like. It's a it's a tooth replacement that's okay. made of plastic. It's not for eating on. It's for So you can't eat with these. They're really not for eating. They're, but do they're for eat show. With them? Yeah. They're for show. Yeah, they try and they, they break often. Interesting. Okay. Uh, but some people this is terrible. Some people can wear these for years. Do for, they? I recently had a patient that that wore one of these for eight years and finally got his dental implant. And he said, why didn't I do this sooner? I should have done this well, sooner. Well, why didn't he? He just, he got used to, he got, well, they don't know. Do you he think got used to this. Can you get used to this? <laughs> well, I guess in social situations, this can't be great. I mean, in uh, you know, for kissing or, or dating or things like that, when you have something that comes no, out of your mouth. No, and you've got pa plastic that covers the roof of your mouth, so it affects the way food moves around your. And that's called a flipper. It's called a partial denture. Partial denture. Or a flipper is or a the flipper. a nickname for it. That's a nickname. What do patients call it? They call it yeah, a flipper. A flipper. Okay. So those people need to come in, get their tooth back. It's that simple. It's that simple. Okay. It's that simple. Well, Randy, let me give you an example of someone that's been wearing a partial denture for years. So okay. this patient. Oh, my goodness. He's 46 years old, has been wearing a partial denture for 20 years. He is lost, that common, by the way, to it see is, that? It is. It is. There's a lot of young adults that are missing teeth, not from periodontal disease, but from trauma or tooth decay. Okay. And so his story is that he was missing teeth for more than 20 years wearing a partial denture, very self-conscious about it, really didn't like to smile, had to change his diet somewhat, wasn't able to eat all the foods he liked, but really, really did not like to smile for anybody, which was too bad because he had a very, very outgoing personality. So he so, comes to you wanting dental implants already from his general dentist? Oh, he had been wanting implants for years. Okay. He just... He had to save up the money. So he was wearing one of these flipper things. He was. Okay. And he's young. He knew he wanted it. I mean, 47 is very young to have this going on. 46, and he's been missing these teeth since he was 26. That's way too young to be missing teeth. Okay. Can you imagine? So, well, I can't imagine. No, that sounds pretty bad. So he goes to you. You evaluate the situation. Then what? Well, we were able to place three dental implants for him to replace five teeth. Okay. And I think that's important to point out that you don't need one dental implant for every missing tooth. You can get fewer implants to hold the dental implant bridge. And in his case, he was able to get his teeth back after 20 years. Interesting. And it really brought out his personality. Really? Oh, it was amazing. So after 20 years of not showing his smile, he was able to laugh and just, he kind of wanted to show his teeth off. Okay, okay. You say they have to learn after how to smile. Oh yeah. Because they've been frowning well, or, or you know, hiding it for so if long. If you're trying to hide it, yeah, you've, you've actually kind of trained your face to keep your lip down. So how nice would it be to smile after 20 years? You know, we're, you know one of the things, and, and, and we've talked at length about this, and, and I'm trying not to endorse you, by the way, okay? But you know, our program airs throughout the United States and Canada, but you know, I think dental implants is one of those things that because a guy like this with all these missing two teeth that you say that he would eventually probably lost all of his teeth. That it just progresses and nobody wants to lose all their teeth. So dental implants early rather than later is better. Is that right? Am I, am I right? Tooth replacement that? with a dental implant is really the best solution because what can happen is once you've lost one tooth and decided to not replace that tooth, what happens when you when you lose your second tooth or your third tooth or your fourth tooth? You just don't replace those also. So the so the mouth starts to collapse. Absolutely, teeth because you're losing to, bone and things teeth, like that. Yeah, the bone gets lost where the teeth used to be because why would the bone be there if the teeth? So they're headed are gone? for disaster, right? Absolutely, that's not an exaggeration. They are. They're they're headed towards a denture. Because once you've decided to not replace your teeth that are missing, it, if you make that same decision with every tooth that's lost, then you're just moving yourself towards a dental implant. And if you're young and wearing a denture, that can be tragic. Yeah. And what happens when you're missing teeth is that the remaining teeth have a shortened lifespan because they've got to take up the biting forces where the teeth are missing. 
So you're actually asking or burdening the remaining teeth to do more of the job. And so you shorten their lifespan. Is it painful though? I mean, dental implants, the patients complain about pain. They really don't. There's some soreness. It's a procedure. Okay. But it's really not what people tend to think it is. Okay, so it's not, it's nothing to be afraid of because people don't like going to the dentist. No. And dental implants, I, I you know I told you this on the phone. I mean, it sounds like. Well, and for anyone that's wearing a denture, they've probably been through years of painful dental experiences. Okay. And getting the dental implants, I think they would find that that, that is probably one of the more comfortable things they've ever been through. I mean, certainly they've been through a lot. Is it true that with just two dental implants? Yes. You can get something that snaps yes. and snaps out? Let me show you this. Okay, okay. So I've brought a model that shows a denture fixed with two dental implants. Okay, Try to remove that. Okay. This is not an exaggeration, right? No. It's actual. Okay. I'm not, my hands aren't even greasy. Okay, there we go. That's tight. That is tight. I mean, is that almost too tight where they couldn't pull it out themselves? I mean, if you're a 70 year old person? The inserts are adjustable, so they can vary. They can okay. vary the tightness, so but that's this typical. Case, okay, so it snaps on. Snaps on. Two dental implants. Yes. Pretty snug. What about adhesive? You still have to put adhesive no. in the back? No. No adhesive. No adhesive. Interesting. Fantastic. And what are they, I mean, if there was, you know, we talked a little, you know, we, we, we were joking on the phone and, and we were talking about that if there were a try-in period where, where the denture wearers that were watching this could just try two dental implants for the weekend to snap in, snap out mm -hmm. denture. That they couldn't go back. Oh, you believe that? They would never go back. Really? They would never go back, and they would wonder why they hadn't done that years ago. Is that, do you think there's a happy denture wear out there? I think there's happier denture wearers that have dental implants, but with the conventional... So they don't know what they're missing. The they, conventional dentures, yeah, they don't, yeah, that's exactly right. They don't know what they're missing. They don't know. People accommodate to different situations. Okay. Okay. They just adapt. You know, if something changes over time slowly, you can get used to it, right? And you say the bone dissolves away it does. when you're wearing a denture. The bone changes a lot, very, very, very dramatically. So the bone changes the most the first year after the teeth are removed. It goes through what's called a remodeling phase. And most of the bone is lost the first year. And after that, the bone is atrophied pretty much. Just slowly starts dissolving away. Yeah. It, like I said, the most in the first year. And there's, when someone first gets a denture, there's a lot of relines to the denture just to accommodate the plastic denture. So the reline the is, is adding plastic to the denture As because the they've bone lost is bone. Shrinking. Is that yes. right? Yes. So by the time you, a person is one year out from getting their teeth removed and getting a denture, they may need a second denture just because their jawbone has changed so much. So, so the, so the implants actually, it's the force that holds the bone. The implants can help retain the bone in the area where the implant has been placed because once the implant is placed and attached to the denture and you're chewing on the denture, that stimulates the implant in the jawbone and bone has a purpose then. So the bone stays there. Okay, now we're going to take a break. And, and I have a lot of questions for the denture wear. I want to know the process, how long it takes, how soon they can eat. But, uh, you know, I know you brought a model. It's very interesting to me. You just showed me for a couple seconds. But for the crowd out there of the people that have been told their teeth have to go, bleeding gums, puffy gums, loose teeth, uh, you, you have something that shows, and I've never seen a model like that before, that shows what periodontal disease actually is. And you say that you can't even see it from the tops of the teeth sometimes. You can't. So what is that? It's very interesting. What are we looking at here? Well, when someone has periodontal disease, there's bacteria that builds up under the gums. And the gums may stay in the same position they've always been in, but as the bacteria works its way further down on the root surface, the bone goes away. So this model just illustrates. So that's taking away the gums. The, yeah, well, that's just to look. Right, got it. So, so on this model, you can see that the buildup on the teeth. Is that what it actually looks like? Is black because. And that's bacteria? The calculus picks up blood or pigment from blood, so it looks black. The 
bone doesn't want to be anywhere near the bacteria, so the bone goes away. It's like your body's trying to exfoliate the tooth because and the tooth, the tooth has loose. bacteria on it. The is that gums what makes are the tooth bleeding. Loose? Yes, the tooth is loose because, because there's the bone... less bone holding the tooth on. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So the tooth becomes loose and it hurts to chew, your, ch your bite changes, your gums are bleeding, your breath is bad. The good news is that this is an infection that can be easily cleaned with periodontal treatment. Is that right? It so can do be, something it can, about it. It can be controlled. Puffy, bleeding gums, loose teeth. You could stop it's it. It's an infection that you can get to. That you could remove. It's a, absolutely. And uh, now, now the people that have been told their teeth have to go. Okay, what, now their gums are bad. Okay, I had a discussion with somebody. They said they have bad gums. When you extract the teeth, if, the if, gums get better. If the process has been happening for long enough that it's so advanced that the teeth have to be removed, then once the teeth are taken out and dentures are made, it, it completely stops so the gum that get, infection. The gums get healthy. The bone gets healthy. The gums get healthy. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. More about the process, what people can expect on day one, and, and a little bit about what the evaluation's like to determine whether somebody's a good candidate. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. Up next, what you need to know about dental implants. Dr. Kuznia says, no more dentures. We'll be right back. You are watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, dental implants. With us, we have an expert on the topic, board certified periodontist, Dr. Kuznia. Now, we're talking about dentures, no more dentures, and that's possible. In the future, is that the future of dentistry? Oh, absolutely. In your opinion? Absolutely. Let me tell you what the denture wearer goes through. Okay. Someone that wears a denture has pieces of plastic in their mouth. They're kind of floating around. They can't get a good bite of food. They can't taste food as well. They are very conscious about them in a social situation. And what dental implants can do is secure those dentures and help them get back to life, enjoy eating again. So even with two implants, could you eat like chicken or oh, steak? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Really? An apple? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, and now, go ahead. Now, that's with two dental implants. So, of course, you can imagine that four might be better because just like a chair has four legs, it's got some more back and forth stability. But as far as giving some stability and retaining the denture, two dental implants are a fantastic option for anybody that's been wearing a denture for years and it doesn't fit well and they're just unhappy with it. Okay, so four dental implants, uh, very snug. Very snug. And you could use your own denture. Tell me about that. Well, when the dental implants are placed, if the denture is fitting well, or reasonably well, and has a good bite, then two dental implants or four dental implants can be placed, and just some modifications made to the denture. Well, like little facets to put the, the denture? To put the, yeah, just, some, just removing a little bit of the acrylic to put a snap in the denture that would fit onto the dental implant. This is a good, a good example of someone with a removable partial denture that had problems with it fitting. And I'll tell you what, Randy, removable partial dentures are really well known to not be used by patients. They don't fit well. Nobody, you know, your friends can't see it, so if it doesn't fit well and you're not comfortable wearing it, you might not wear it. So you only wear it around friends, maybe. What I've seen happen is someone will wear a lower partial denture for a few months right after they get it. They're not happy with it. Nobody can really see it, so they tend not to wear it. Once you've not worn it for a while, your other teeth shift around and it doesn't fit anymore. So what's the answer? So there's a lot of people that have, what's the answer? It's dental implants. So what do you do? I place two dental implants in the jaw and a little snap can be placed on the dental implant. And this is for people, now this picture, this is for people missing teeth in the rear. They could be missing teeth in the rear or the front. Anywhere okay. where there's a long area or any space where teeth are missing, this is a little snap that can be placed to help hold a partial denture in place. Interesting, interesting. So a lot of times there's clasps on partial dentures. Uh, your friends can see your clasps and you become self-conscious about it. What if you have osteoporosis? Can you still get dental implants? 
there, there's some testing that might need to be done. But yes, people with osteoporosis are candidates for dental implants. What's the oldest? What, what are some of the older ranges of patients uh, that you hear that are getting dental implants or even your patients? Oh, 80s, 90s. Really? Absolutely. If someone's in good health, a dental implant is a good option for them. Okay. Absolutely. If you think you're healthy, that's when you should be getting a dental implant. So, so for those patients that want something fixed in their mouth, what are their options? Well, their options are to get six dental implants. They're usually placed two, two, and two. And bridges can be made that fit on those six dental implants. The patient can't remove. They're only their dentist can remove it. Does it feel like they're regular teeth? It feels like teeth. It does. They can't remove it. It's not like a denture. It, does, it doesn't have a lot of plastic on it. It covers the roof of your mouth. Sounds it like that's what everybody would want, though. That would, right? Yeah, that would be ideal. Do you think people count their teeth? You know, going into this, you, know, you think you need probably, you know, 15 or 20 dental implants. And you're saying six. I'm saying six. And they get a fixed in and their that, mouth. And that's one of the misconceptions about dental implants is that you need a dental implant to replace every single tooth that's missing. You don't. Bridges can be made and six dental implants can secure a bridge that doesn't come out of your mouth. Well, the main benefit for these people by getting rid of all of that plastic from the denture is that you can taste food, you can feel food in your mouth, you can, it'll feel like you have natural teeth. Now, is it true, by the way, all denture wears, they're, they're not really tearing or chewing food? That maybe they're no, kind of mushing just, it together. they're just kind of smushing it together. Really? Smushing it together, so, exactly. So if you get dental implants, you're tearing, you could eat steak. You're biting what, it. What do they tell you, by the way? I mean, do they, I mean oh, is that a big great. deal for them to be able to oh, eat, Oh, it's, guess? yes, yeah. And I've heard different stories about patients that have to alter the way that they cook food, even overcooking pasta, if you can imagine, because they need... Good point. Overcooking Can't pasta. Can't have it al dente. No. No, with the, if you're wearing a denture, you've got to make your food softer. And once you get dental implants, you can eat normal foods prepared the way that you used to have them. Now, salads and things like that are even tough for certain denture wearers? Denture wearers have a hard time eating lettuce. And let me tell you a story. Okay. So I had a patient that put off getting dental impl had dentures, put off getting dental implants for years and she developed some medical problems and stomach problems and her physician told her that she had to have a certain diet. Well, okay. because she was wearing her dentures, she couldn't even eat lettuce, so she couldn't follow her physician's recommendations and she really got into some serious medical problems. The, you know, she, since she couldn't eat what he wanted her to eat, she devel developed diverticulitis gastritis. Because she's not chewing her food. Because she's not eating, yeah, she not. So they stay away from protein. They eat Is that right? From protein, lettuce, nuts, anything that you've really got to chew. You can so only. So denture wearers need to do this. Denture, a denture wearer can only mash their food like this. Okay. They can't bite into it and grind it and size it like someone with teeth. How soon could they bite into like a steak or corn in the cob or whatever. So dentureware watching this, they go in, uh, you know, they're... As soon as the denture is connected to the dental implants, they can start doing that. Is that right? Is that right? Now, uh, thousands of, uh, of denturewares in your uh, area, you think? Absolutely. There's thousands? Oh, everywhere. And they just don't know. They just don't the know. two, four, six implants could change everything. They just don't know. I think they just don't know if they knew how much the dental implants could help them. They'd be lined up around the block? Yeah, they would have done it a long time ago. Really? So final message. Patient out there, missing one tooth, they've been told their teeth have to go, and especially the, the denture wearers out there. Uh, what's their first move? What's your recommendation? See a, see a dentist or a periodontist. Find out what your options are. Okay, and get started right away. And get started. And, it, and you say it doesn't hurt. Or, or pain is not something they complain about. Pain shouldn't right. keep you from getting this treatment. But, but for highly anxious patients, you do IV sedation. We do IV sedation. Sed, uh, sedation is a great option for patients because you can come to the visit, you can go to sleep for your s procedure, and wake up at your house. With a new set of teeth. With a new set of teeth.
Wow, interesting. Okay, so no more adhesives, things like that. No more adhesives. Do people hate that? I've when never, I've, I've never heard anyone say, "Oh, I like using this adhesive." <laughs> well, that's obvious, but I mean, I mean, do they? I mean, is this something they really don't like? They really don't like it. They, the adhesive, gets in. You're, you're basically eating your adhesive. Is it doesn't. Right? It sticks. It's really tacky. You, you know, to feel it in your mouth all the time. It's, it's kind of got a rubber, cementy texture to it. It just, it won't. It, it's very difficult to, to clean off. 